2023 we'll call the meeting to order uh, as this meeting is being recorded and for the benefit of those who have dialed in uh, we ask that everybody when you're recognized by the chair or make a motion or second to please uh, start with your name um, guests or persons having relevant knowledge or information may attend and speak as part of the agenda upon acceptance of the meeting agenda by the board um, all our guests must be recognized by the chair before addressing the board or participating in the discussion. Um, so first I'd like to ask Kathy, or I'm sorry, Julie Schwartz uh, to do the roll call. Good morning, everybody. I'm going to do the roll call. And if you can please say yes, if you're present, if you're silence, I'll note your as absence. Uh, Mark Balsheri. Here. Matt Delaney. Here. Timothy Morris. Here. David Kozlowski. Here. Sergeant Jeffrey Houck. Bob Terry. Here. Todd Murray. Kristen Brown? Here. Richard Anderson? Ryan LaFleur? Here. Deputy Police Commissioner Kimberly Beatty? Brendan Casey? Chief Michael Volk? Good Alan morning. Turner. Attending remotely from Valhalla, New York. Thank you. Alan Turner? Here. Anthony Tripp? Via uh, Zoom with uh, Glen Cove, New York. Who? Juan Figueroa? Here. Michael Serrato? Here. Thank you. Hey, we have a quorum. Um, everyone should have received a copy of the February 1st uh, C board meeting minutes. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to accept the minutes from the February meeting. Uh, Brian LaFleur, I'll make that motion. Brian LaFleur, motion. Seconded? Second. Seconded by Tim Morris. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Uh, everyone should have received a copy of the agenda. Does anybody need a copy of the agenda? Okay. Um, I'll entertain a motion to accept the agenda for this meeting. Anthony Tripp. Uh, Alan, Alan Turner, Anthony Tripp, second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion's carried. Um, I'd like to, before we get rolling, I'd like to briefly review some personnel changes at OIEC. Uh, as folks know, Brett Chalice retired. Uh, we wish him the best of luck and thank him for his years of service with OIEC and our 911 community. Uh, anything 911 related at this time uh, until we have a replacement, uh, the temporarily assigning the duties to myself as state 911 coordinator. Um, also, Kathy Shea up there in the corner will be retiring at the end of this month. So we wish Kathy the best of luck and thank her for all she's done. Um, for dishes overall, because you've been through other eight other offices as well, um, ending her career here at OIC, which we're thankful for. Um, and uh, Paul Glasser, who's sitting here at the table, is a new hire here as a radio engineer. Um, primarily, I've assigned him mostly 911 tasks, and he's uh, going through the, the Brett files now and, and looking at updating most of the information for us as we move forward with a lot of the 911 stuff. So welcome aboard, Paul. Uh, everyone should have received a copy after the last meeting of some bylaw changes. Uh, I want to go over the bylaw changes. It's just basically cleaning up some of our committees and working groups, and then we can do a motion at the end or a discussion if anybody would like to. Um, the first thing is uh, we want to rename the 911 Standard Advisory Committee to the 911 Advisory Committee uh, because there's a lot more than just standards that they'll be doing with, dealing with. Um, we also want to remove the public safety broadband user group, the channel naming and use working group, and the communications and interoperable working group. Um, they still may do reports anyway, but there's, they're not very active, so there's no need to continue to have those committees. Uh, we also want to add the following, uh, the next generation 911 working group, the GIS working group, the state agency communications committee, which is the old state agency working group, and I had put on there a suggestion for a bylaws committee. However, after looking through our bylaws, we really don't need a committee for that. So we, uh, we scratched that. Uh, at this time, I'll entertain a motion to accept these changes to the bylaws, unless there's any discussion. Okay, entertain a motion from somebody. I'll make a motion, Bob Terry. Bob Terry, motion, seconded. Second. Sheriff, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carried. Okay, one of the things uh, I just wanted to mention 
you probably should move these slides ahead. Um, we took a look at, there's quite a few members in the committees and working groups. Uh, most of, well, not most, but a lot of the members in those groups have either retired or moved on. So we're going to take a look at all the committees and working group membership. Uh, so at this time, if anybody is interested in being on any of the committees or working groups, please email Phil, Julie, and myself. Um, we're going to probably reach out to those members that are already in those groups and see if they want to continue as well. Uh, so, the next part of the agenda will be our committee reports, and we'll start off with the 9-1 Advisory Committee. Alan Turner, you're the chair. Hello, everybody. Um, good news with the 9-1 uh, standards. They're almost to the point where we're ready to finalize them. Some of the, what you call it, the state requirements are on the board, but... Uh, with a couple of minor changes we might foresee, I think we're we're just about there. Hopefully with the, if not the next board meeting, then the October, we should be able to approve them. Thanks, Al. Um, for the next generation 911 working group, I'm gonna be very brief, but I'm gonna just talk about it. Um, we've been working on, as I said, Paul's been going through a lot of the, the files, documents we have, and trying to come up with um, the best way to move forward. We've also, as I talked earlier um, today, and, and I keep talking about, we've been opening up communications between state agencies, or, uh, the 9-1 coordinators, the consortiums. Um, so we're getting a lot of good input. Uh, we don't want to rush this, so we're going to re we're going to take a look at the 9-1 working group. We're going to update the membership. And then we're going to start looking at the best path forward, not rushing it, not doing it, doing something incorrectly. We want to take our time and do it right. And I think everybody in here agrees with that. So um, that's pretty much the update right now. We're gathering the information and, and looking for uh, the best approach to move forward with input from all those different agencies and groups. So that's the only update I have on that at this time. So, Mr. Engstrom, do you have a GIS update? Speaking of that, Gene. Yes, sir. Thank you. I do. Um, uh, I gave a similar update to the 911 coordinators um, in Kingston a couple of weeks ago. Um, we, uh, the GIS program office, had a, uh, a proof of concept for a shared editing environment to build the PSAP boundaries for statewide. Um, it failed, unfortunately. It wasn't able to handle the amount of data that we fed into it. Um, it just, it would crash upon loading large data sets. So we have, we took a step back, um, took a look at what our alternatives were. We engaged ESRI, which is the predominant GIS uh, software vendor uh, nationwide. Um, they gave us several alternatives. Um, one of the alternatives that we're looking at uh, extensively is what we're calling a GIS markup or a whiteboard environment. So what that'll do is that'll give uh, all the PSAP GIS participants a chance to review their data um, in detail in a shared environment, most likely web delivered via a web interface. Um, they'll be able to mark up any incorrect boundary lines and that information will get sent back to the GIS program office where we will make edits to that layer, submit them, return them back to the county for uh, approval, and then they will become part of the statewide PSAP boundary layer. Um, there's a couple different flavors that we're looking at. Um, a a, a county-based version and a every PSAP-based version. So uh, but that's to be determined. I'm working with uh, the director and OIEC on how that part of it will work. Um, we already have a draft GIS PSAP layer. Um, I was able to find a layer uh, with the US DHSES Highfelt, which is an acronym that I keep forgetting, Homeland Infrastructure Foundation level data. 
So the US DHSES keeps a pretty extensive inventory of uh, critical infrastructure assets um, and the PSAP boundaries are one of them. So we do have a, a draft. Um, it was a little messy. So our office has already started cleaning it up. Um, and we have reached out to our FOIL officer and our um, CISO uh, for security. And I'm working with the director and OIEC to determine ownership of this layer. And the intention is to make it available to all the municipalities in New York State um, for editing use in their systems and the statewide version. So, and that is all working simultaneously as I speak. So, we're off and running. Thank you. Any questions for Derek? Okay, I'll entertain a motion to accept our committee reports. Right before start moving. Um, floor seconded by Tim Morris. Second. Tim Morris. All in favor? Opposed? What? Right. Not with my friends. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. We have one more committee. I apologize. <laughs> All right. Matt Delaney, could you give us an update on the state agency committee? So, uh, the state agency, we have a state agency communications committee. We continue to meet as uh, state agencies. We've been doing presentations at each meeting. Uh, one or two state agencies presents to the other state agencies on their communications uh, systems and capabilities, just to make sure everyone uh, is aware of what everyone else in the state is doing. Uh, and uh, there are several state agencies that are currently working on uh, radio system improvements or new radio systems, and we're you know, working together on collaborative uh, opportunities for uh, for uh, tower site sharing or sharing of infrastructure or procurements or other projects. Uh, also, uh, the communication, state agency communications group has a uh, liaison representative to the C3 group. It's uh, Lieutenant Morris from State Police, who now attends the C3 meetings as well as the state agency representative. Okay, thank you. I'll just keep the motion we have on the committees. So we'll move on to the next. Uh, we'll do some program updates. First thing is grants. Um, as everybody's aware, I hope uh, the 2023 PSAP operations and SIG formula grants were released on Monday, May 15th. Um, anyone needing information on these grants can either check the website or contact the grants program office rep or us and we'll assist. Uh, the two 2023 SIG targeted. 2024 PSAP ops, SIG formula, and SIG targeted are all being reviewed and updated currently. Um, and then a re release date on those will be determined. Um, we are uh, trying to get the grants out quicker. Uh, we're all working together collaboratively to do that. So that's what I have for grants update. Next one is communication unit program. He was going to give us an update on that. Hey everyone. Uh, so, so far this year, we've uh, completed a COMEL class a COMT class and an INTD, as well as a two regional workshops, one up in Oswego and another in Dutchess County. We have one coming up June 12th in Warren County. Uh, we also completed a COMEX April 12th through the 14th at the SPTC. Up on the screen here is the remaining portion of our schedule for the rest of the year. Uh, there are a couple that have been requested uh, out near County for an INTD, but that was a special request. And we have a couple other uh, postponed TAs that we're looking at facilitating before the end of the year with uh, limitations being that a lot of people could not meet the prerequisites due to the availability of three and 400 ICS courses. So we're looking at rectifying that issue and uh, workarounds, possible solutions to that and offering more courses so that people can meet the prerequisites to attend. Uh, next slide. Please reach out to your constituents and people that you think would be interested in our program. Um, we are evaluating the needs of New York State and where we have maybe possibly reached saturation in different courses. So we do want your feedback as well as you guys all promoting the program throughout the state so that we can better fit the needs of New York State and meet what you guys are looking for. So please provide myself and Julie at either my email or the OIC training email, any feedback that you guys have. Next slide. Uh, here are some updated numbers on the credential personnel. 
it's only changed, uh, I believe, three from January. Um, we did lose a couple due to people not recertifying their credentials. But these are updated numbers as of a couple days ago. Next slide. And here is a number of trained personnel, people that have taken courses with us, but not necessarily met all the requirements to be credentialed. A uh, considerable number there, 801. Uh, this year it is kind of a uh, projected number based on the limitations of how many people can attend the courses. So that is an estimated number for this year, but uh, we look forward to uh, increasing that. And I think with the INTDs out in Erie County that were a special request will be right around that 801 number. That is all I have if no one has any questions. Any questions from Bill? All right, on the 9-1 program, I've already touched on it twice. Um, as I said, Paul Glasser has been assigned to 9-1 duties and currently going through all of Brett's materials that he's provided us. Um, we have started to have more frequent meetings regarding 9 -1 and where we are, what we need to update, where we need to go, uh, some timelines on some things. And of course, this is all including the NG 9 -1 solution. Um, there will be much more on this in the near future, most likely prior to the next seat board meeting, and definitely at the next seat board meeting. So, um, that's all I have at this point. Other updates. Um, we started this last uh, board meeting and it worked out very well. Uh, our C3 meetings the night before, uh, and a lot of good discussions, and they elected a chair. <laughs> the last meeting, uh, I think he left the room, right? It was one no vote. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we've asked them to do a report at the seat board meeting each each uh, quarter. <clears throat> so I'll turn it over to Mr. Dana Smith, C3 chair. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of C3, first, congratulations, Kath, and, and thank you for your service. And, and you'll be missed. We wish you the best of luck. Um, we did meet last night. Uh, the C3 is getting a little more organized. Thanks to Alan for great minutes and, and following up with everyone. Um, I can assure this board, uh, as it relates to redundancy and resiliency, there's been a tremendous amount of work done uh, across all the consortiums and our county partners. Uh, the same can be said for interoperability. Uh, we'll be doing some work with, with Mark and his staff to identify gaps in that. But the, the grant funding has absolutely helped with that. I think the consortiums and the counties are doing a good job meeting meeting the intent of, of the grant projects. We'll continue to work together, work with the director and, and get have us be involved. Hopefully some of our members will want to join the 911 effort and, and see what we can do to address all those things. There's a lot of sweeping changes coming with some significant efforts. And I think I'm confident the consortium chairs and our county partners will want to be part of that and help contribute to the efforts to improve this for all of us. Um, we look forward to continuing that relationship, and uh, we'll see you in August. Good. Thanks. Thanks, Dan. Okay, Mr. Kopstein, uh, the Safe Com Report. Uh, yeah. Matt's going yeah, yeah, to get your slides up. Yeah, here you went. Okay. It's be a little bit longer today than I normally do it. First, Within, uh, I don't want the other one. I want the other one first. Okay, thank you. First, within uh, the Emergency Communications Division of CISA, the, the reorganizing, the reorganization is continuing. You're going to see some new names, liaison of change, and the like. SafeCom. That I belong to, and my affiliation right now is here. We don't work for government or governmental agency. We have affiliations. So we're not bound by certain issues, and we are required by law. Next week, the National Council of State White Interoperability Coordinators if not required by law, and that's one of the differences. I'm going to pass out the new knife fog. Please look at it. They're available to be ordered. I think the director ordered some for his staff. 
take a look. The ordering information is available online. Go to the SafeCom website. SafeCom added five new members at our meeting in Pasadena last week. Uh, the ARRL is now an organization that's with SafeCom, that's OrgsCom. So they will be participating. Uh, Richard Latz Arena from the one of the tribes up in Connecticut. Richard Fisk from Massachusetts. Michael Mahoney from Cambridge 911. And Pete Rogers from Tennessee Advanced uh, Communications Network. At the consortium meeting, at the symposium, I spoke about the survey. Originally, it was going to come out in the third quarter. It's going to be coming out in two weeks. The uh, paperwork reduction people actually got it out faster. Why is it being called paperwork reduction? I haven't got the vaguest idea because it's done online. There is no paper. But what are we doing differently this time than we have in the past? Can we redo it? Every five years, it's required by law. We collect data. We do a gap analysis. Why? It helps decision making. It helps the training programs. What's the gap analysis? We're doing it a little bit different this year. This is what we're going to be looking at. What's the difference? There are going to be four separate surveys. There's going to be a federal survey. There's going to be a tribal survey. Survey. There's going to be a state survey, and there's going to be a county and local survey. Every state is a little bit different. So in New York State, for example, a big authority like the MTA will fall under the county survey. Smaller authorities that are city or county in nature will fall under the county surveys. Who do we want to do it? Every law enforcement agency, every EMS agency, every fire service, Every OEM agency. I'm hoping that the director will be able to make sure when the surveys come out that all of the agencies are reminded and pass it on to OFPC and CMO and the like. Why? In order for the survey to be validated, we need a minimum of 400 responses nationwide in each category that will validate it and help the reliability, then we can do the gap analysis. It's going to be done online. It will take about 35 minutes to do. Within the survey, you will see round and square boxes. One allows multiple choices, one allows singular choices in answering. Talk to your colleagues, but please, let's get the surveys done when they're in. We're going to need state help. We're going to need help from the State Sheriff's Association, from the State Chiefs of Police Association, from REMSCOs and the like. The more the merrier, the better the gap analysis. Do we have any questions? Go to the websites. Okay. Can you bring up the other one, Matt, please? Everybody here is familiar with NIMS and ICS, correct? 
There's going to be a change. We're adding a branch called ICT, Information Communications Technology. It will still be under logistics, but it raises it up a little bit. That's the organization chart. Have you noticed now we have, in addition to the Carmel, the ITSL and the cybersecurity unit? We have found over time that this is what is happening in the field. We don't realize it, but we use a lot of data. OIEC puts drones up. Video is data. Come down in the data stream. How do we protect it? And the like. What did we find out during COVID? We stood up field hospitals, so to speak, and clinics. How did that information get exchanged? How did we re record who get the sh got shots and, and the like? Hence, we need cybersecurity. There's going to be additional position task books and additional positions. Alan, you're the Comco for Orleans County. There will be an official Comco position in ICS as we move forward. So that's what's going to be under Carmel. And that's what's going to be IT and cybersecurity. Can you go back a slide? And there will be, again, for the new position, there will be new task books, and we're refreshing the old task books. And these slides are recorded. They'll be on the website for future look. And go to some of the participating agencies. Be more than happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Jay? And I would ask if you have questions in the future, run them through the director. He can reach me. Run them through Matt with the director's permission. He can reach me. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jay. Oh, by the way, wherever those four books are, we've ever got them last, you can keep them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they fell us that part at the beginning. <laughs> Wouldn't have made it anywhere. <laughs> Again, anybody can order them. It, it, it's not a big deal. We ordered 250, and we'll see. Yeah. Mike Volk ordered them. They were approved. They haven't been delivered yet. But I was told last week at the meeting, anybody who orders them will get them. There's also PDF copies on the Aegis website. Yeah, well, I, I like the, the pocket version. There's also an application, too, if you want the application on your phone. and, and it's, it's the same version I just yeah. checked. Yeah. yeah, and take it out in the rain and you lose your phone. Yeah, yeah. All right, if there's no questions for Jay, we'll move on on the agenda. Um, old business, is, it, is there any old business to discuss? Yes. I, I realize the meeting's moving pretty quickly. Um, we're leaving some time at the end for everybody in the network, which I'm sure you're going to do. So. Um, no old business? I'll entertain a motion to accept old business. Turner, make the motion. Alan Turner made the motion. Bob Perry, second. Bob Perry, second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Perry. Any new business? New business? Okay. I'll entertain a motion to accept new business. Anthony Tripp. Anthony Tripp made the motion seconded by? Brian LaFleur. Brian LaFleur. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? It's carried. A uh, reminder, our next meeting is going to be Wednesday, August 2nd. will probably be a little bit of a longer meeting, I would think. Um, anything for the good of the order? 
Okay, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. David Kislowski. David Kislowski. Mike Serrato. Mike Favor. Opposed? Gary, hang out in networking. Thank you. 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 Yeah, keep getting heard. Yeah, <laughs> Mario, how are you? Fantastic. Yeah, we wanted to dwell.